Okay, we gotta get started because we, we have, gotta get started. We have so much. We so got a lot of questions. Keep, yeah. Yep. So, all right, Kaylee, you got the you got all the right. All right. Driver's seat right now. I do have the driver's seat. So, uh, this is our uh, contact information. So, um, there's Karen's email and my email, and then we also have little book me's where you can book a time with us, and we'll zoom with you for to answer any questions or if you're having issues with something, uh, we'd love to help you. Um, we're going to be yeah. updating that pretty soon for January. And those are we don't great. have our January dates yet. Yeah, those are great because you can click on that and it'll automatically show you our calendar. Well, it kind of shows you our calendar, but it shows you yeah. when we're available and you just click on it. And like there's Kaylee showing that one and you can just pick a date and it'll show you like, the times so yep Ooh, wednesday have lots of availability yeah except you're did you not put down you're going to be at a campus tomorrow <laughs> well i am at a campus but i'm only record i start recording at 9 40. oh got so it oh, available it to so, zoom oh, yeah so there's all my gap. that's cool because yeah. when we add something to our calendar it takes it off of here so that's always a great piece to keep so you can always get in touch with us about anything we've done the whole webinar or anything digital that you all have questions about. And so of course our YouTube channels here. And then if you've missed a kicking it with Karen and Kaylee, you can check out our webpage here where you can go back and rewatch any of the kicking it's. Except for last and, times, we had a little bit of technical difficulty. Uh, I, haven't, I haven't posted it yet. Okay. Okay. And then you can also register for our upcoming assessment series as well. So you can register for those January courses and then you can see what's coming up in February March. and March. Oh, wow, my okay. hair's got horns over here. All right, so the first thing is if you saw our um, 12 days of digital learning that has been posting in the workplace chat or in workplace, um, we talked about converting test banks uh, to item banks. And so I realized after working with a teacher that because of the access I have, the video is actually incorrect for a teacher. So I've updated that video here and in the um, 12 days of Christmas uh, slideshow. So if you have that, you have the newest version, but I just wanna take you through uh, how you would do that. I have Schoology and I'm logged in as my teacher. So I have the right account. <laughs> Um, and you would just go to the curriculum container or anywhere you would have a, a test bank. So this is a bank of questions for a test quiz. So let me go into resources. Schoology is still slow today. It's, oh slow. it's ready for a Christmas break too. It is. It's ready. And so like this one, at the very end, we have the evaluation for learning. And so these right here, this little folder with a green puzzle piece inside of it, these are test banks. And so as a teacher, I would click on this little gear and copy it. And I'm just gonna save it to my resources. So I just leave all of this the same and click copy. And so now when I go into my resources right here at the top, it automatically takes me to my home. And anytime you save anything to your resources, it's all gonna go to the very end. And now I want to convert that to an item bank. And the reason I wanna convert it to an item bank is because now I can use it with the assessment feature and not just the uh, test quiz. So I'm gonna go ahead and convert it. Oh, there we go. And so there is that new assessment. And so all I would need to do, and I like to build things in my practice course. We're gonna talk about that here in a minute. But I just click on add materials. Add assessment. And then you would just name it. So I'm going to just name this one practice. You can give it a due date. Make sure your submissions are enabled. 
give it a category and hit create. And once you hit create, it's going to bring up that page of settings. And I'm going to skip the setup for right now and just go to questions. And this is what I want right here, this add from item bank, which is what I just converted. And I saved that in my personal resources. And again, it's all the way at the bottom. So it's this one. And so now I can pick and choose which questions I want to use, or I can select all of them. Let's see, I'm gonna move my thing here. Add seven items. And so now it's in my assessments and I can click on the question and I can edit the question if I need to. So if I wanna change up some of the numbers, I can do that. Um, if I realize like, oh, the answer is incorrect on here, then I can change it to the correct answer. And I can also add in the learning objectives uh, so that I can start building mastery. And so I'm just gonna click save. And then all I would need to do is just click over here on actions and got to move my pictures over here and click copy to course. And so now I can copy it to one of my actual courses that my students are in. Okay. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing. And Karen, do you want to take over with the next question? Karen, you're muted. How about I unmute? There we go. <laughs> so can y'all see my screen now? <laughs> yes. Okay. So, all right. So we've already covered this. And in this video, I'm going to show you. And what I was going to tell you is as we go along, you'll see that like Kaylee has made a video here to show all those steps that we just did. So you don't need to be taking notes because if you can rewatch this webinar, but you can also go back into this. Um, I'm going to exit out for just a second. If you're in this and you don't want to try to remember our um, our link that we posted earlier. Remember, you can always go to file and make your own copy of this presentation and that way it'll be in your um, in your drive and you can also bookmark it that way as well. All right, so I'm going to all right going on to the next thing right here. I'm going to move the zoom over so I look like I'm looking at y'all sideways. So one of our questions was how do I make it so that students have to do one thing before moving on to the next. And so on this, you're going to want to make sure you're setting up student completion rules. We have a video here that shows how to do completion rules. I'm getting ready to show you real fast, but we also have some other videos here that I have linked in under additional resources that you can go to uh, and get to later. I'm going to go to my practice course and kind of show you. Now, I'm also going to um, I'm also going to say that sometimes student, you know, I have a love hate relationship with stu student completion rules. OK, um, they can be good, but they can also be a double edged short sword because you can add them in and then kids can get stuck on things and not be able to get past them and that sort of thing. If you rearrange or move your folders or you make any edits in there, sometimes that can cause a little glitch and then the kids get stuck in a in a spot. So just be cautious when you're using student completion rules. Um, you want to make sure that you have your folders and everything set up and ready to go before you start adding on those completion rules. But I'm in my practice course. And so if I want to, so I'm going to just go into um, this little folder right here. I'll just go inside here. And let's say that I decide, let me see if I have anything in Monday. Oh, no, I don't have anything. But let's go back out for just a little bit. So if I want to add a completion rule and I want to fix it so that the kids have to work in this folder, I'm going to go up here to options and I'm going to go to student completion. 
And then now on this one, I'm going, I, I just have a folder. Let me get out of this and go back out for just a little bit. Let me see if I can do one beep, outside here. Let me do a student completion on here because I'm going to get more options here. I can do folders. I can um, set them this way right here and I can say that they must complete it and that sort of thing. Actually, I'm trying to find a good folder that I actually have some things inside. Oh, this one might work because I have stuff inside here. No, I don't. This one. Okay, this will be a good one. So let me go inside this one because this will be a better example. So if I'm inside this folder, I'm ready to set it. I'm gonna go to options, student completion, and I'm going to, so there's that first one. So I hit add requirement. So for that first page, which was called digital citizenship, I'm gonna set that so they have to view that item. I can add another requirement now, it looks like it made the exact same page right here, but if I click on this, I can go down and find the next thing that is listed in my folder. So I'm going to say Schoology Information, which happens to also be a folder. So on this one, I could say they have to complete that folder and so on. Then I can add another one. Now, remember, it looks like it adds, it adds that same one again that you started with but you just click this little drop down and you just go to your next item on there. And then based on whatever it is that you have here, you're gonna get different choices. This is a page, so I'm only gonna get a choice of view the item, but um, if it was an assessment that was sitting in here, then I could make it say, oh, they've got to score a, a 70 or above before they can, um, can um, go on. Okay. Now be very careful right here where it says requirements must be completed in sequential order. Uh, we get a lot of help desk tickets that will say, well, if kids, oh, let me, we probably need to check the mute there. Um, so um, we get, we'll get some help desk tickets that might say, oh, my kids it's, it's black and it won't let them click on. And it's usually because they've got this requirements must be completed in a sequential order, which means they have to go you know, straight in order. If I don't check this, then they can kind of bounce around a little bit. They could go to this folder first and then they could come back to this one. But just remember what I said at the very beginning, be very careful. If you set that, that they have to complete it in a certain order, or you set these completion rules and you start making edits and you move things around, it can um, cause this little loop that the kids can get stuck in, okay? Uh, one thing that you can do to, um, and I don't think it's gonna show me because I don't know that I have anyone in here, but sometimes you can go to these little, oops, let me go here this student progress right here, click on this. If your kids are ever stuck and they said, I can't go on, I can't go on. If you'll just hit this, let me go back again, student progress and you click recheck student progress. Normally this will clear out any glitches that are um, keeping your kids from going on. Okay, any questions about student completion rules? I hope that was answering the question that somebody had put in on how do I make it so the students have to do one thing before they move on to the next. And we, like I said, we have these additional um, items and things you can go to look at. Kaylee, am I supposed to just keep going for a little bit or um, are we bouncing back and forth? <laughs> you know, we never talked about it, so it doesn't matter. Let me just go on with this one. Kaylee kind okay. of touched on this just a little bit earlier when she said she likes to make everything in her practice course. I'm the same way. I will very rarely make something in. And let me go over to my course here for just a second. I'm going to move this. I very rarely make something in my resources. I know it's a great little filing cabinet. And sometimes it's good when you're making stuff and you want to share it with with other people and you put it in a group or a resource. But for the most part, I almost always make things first in a course. 
And that's what we ended up, or that's why we made those practice courses for everyone. Um, so you could play around and not have to worry about messing anything up. That's one reason. But another one is because during the summer, you don't have courses that you can work in. And so your practice course is a great place for you to build things uh, as you're thinking about in the summer, maybe in July when you're like, oh, I, I've got a great idea for something I'd like to try. You can go and make it in your practice course. So a lot of the times I will make things in my practice for course first. And then once I get it in here, like let's say I've got this folder set up, I go over to the little gear and I say copy to courses. And what's great about this is it, I can pick a look at this. I've got all these courses. I can put it in more than one course at a time. Uh, another question might be how do I, the best way to post once uh, and copy it to other courses. If you have your courses linked, like let's say you teach um, third grade and you, uh, you do math, science, social studies, and you have a, a morning group and an afternoon group. If you have those courses linked, when you put it into the one course, it goes to both courses. So that's another thing to think about is linking your courses so that when you put it in the one, it goes into the other. And I see some things in chat. Oh, good. Okay. All right, um, Kaylee, do you want to do the next? Let me see what the next one is. Oh, I better do this one. I did <laughs> I, just because I already downloaded the file. <laughs> That's true. I do not have exam view on, on this. She computer. doesn't have exam view on. So we had another question, which is what is the best way to upload an assessment from exam view? Now, let me see something here. When I go to share, if I shrink this down, Kaylee, can y'all see my desktop? Or can you not seeing it? I didn't think so. So I'm going to need to um, hold on. Let me let me go back to the. Um, oh, it paused it. Let me go back. Let me share my desktop first. So uh, and then I'll come back. I'm going to have to bounce between this. There's your desktop. Huh? Can you see your desktop now? Mm -hmm. Okay. Can you see this? So I actually have a little exam view test here that I've made. I'm going to see if I can open it up real fast. Well, maybe. See, it's spinning. Whew. All right, so here is a test that I have already made. So let's say that I decide I want to put this into my Schoology course. So the best way to do that is to first you're going to need to convert this to a file that will go in to Schoology. So what you're going to do is here's my test. It's an exam view test. I'm going to go to file and I'm going to go down here to export. Now, don't worry about writing the instructions down because I have them linked on that slideshow that you saw and uh, there's a link to it. But here you go to file, export. Then you're going to go over here and you're want to get the one that says Blackboard 7.1 dot, 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 dot. So I'm going to click on this and I'm going to save this and I'm going to make it easy for me to find. I'm just going to say math um, practice. Y'all help me remember that name if I can't remember it. And I'm going to say save. So when that comes up, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same exact thing. I'm going to put math oops, practice there. And I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste it also as the directory name. So you're going to put it in the name here and the directory name. And I'm going to say, OK. So now I'm just going to go ahead and close out exam view. I'm going to stop the share for just a second and I'm going to go back to sharing it on. Let me go back to uh, there we go. Now. So I'm back up here. Can y'all see my Schoology? Yep. All right. So now I'm ready to add my test, my exam view test in because I've already converted it. So I'm going to go up here and I'm going to say add. Now, here's the kicker about exam view. You do have to do this in a test quiz. At this time, you can't put it in add assessment, the, the teal one. It has to go into the green uh, test quiz, 
But remember, you can always convert. Once you make it in here, you can then convert your test quiz to an add assessment if you need to. So I'm gonna say add it, test quiz. And I'm going to, I'm gonna just do Swedish there just to get this going real fast. You have to have a category. I'm gonna say create. Once it creates, I'm going to now upload that exam view file. I'm gonna to go to add question and I'm gonna go down to import test quiz, okay? Now remember we, we, uh, we converted that a minute ago to a blackboard seven point and above. I'm gonna click that and I'm going to say next. Now I just have to click here to get my file and I save that, y'all remember, oh, math, math practice. Math practice. Yeah, it was so good. See, I knew y'all were listening. And I will I, say that that little file is the one that people always forget because it's yeah. hard to see. It is hard to see. It kind of looks ghosted there, but you, you just have to click there. Now I say import and watch the magic. It brings that whole test into Schoology. And there are all those questions. I love it. Now, remember you can, and I don't know, y'all didn't ask this, but let me show you because remember I said you could only import them into a test quiz. You can always um, save this to your resources. And when it goes into your resources, if you really want it into that add uh, assessment, the teal one, and as Kaylee said, remember, it always goes down to the bottom. I'm going to then go over here and watch. I can convert it to an assessment. And so when I click that, it will convert it to that teal one, like this one right here. It's going to take it a minute because that was kind of long, but it will eventually get in here. I, you, if I scroll up a little bit, so you can see these that I've done in the, uh, in the past. Yeah, and sometimes you do have to refresh it after you've waited about refresh just to see. But it it was a bigger. It was like it's a bigger file. Yeah, so yeah, it's it'll gonna take, take a, a minute, bit. but uh, it will end up in here. Okay, so not easy to do. Um, let me see. We had a few questions. It looks like what is the benefit? Um, the benefit, Linda, might be because some people might want to take those questions and then start adding some of those. Um, those other, because in the test quiz, you get the basic question types, true, false, multiple choice, and, and not very much. But in the other one, you can do um, ordering, you can do, um, and I'm- Number line. Um, number lines, you can do the audio video, if you yeah. need to add audio video and embed those in there. So there's just, you know, there's, um, more and I would say feature. another reason to use uh, assessments over test quiz is that um, you have the whole setup. So you can have students have a ruler or have a scientific right. calculator or there's all these different settings that you can apply to the student toolbar. Whereas in test quiz, the students don't have that. And I think it's Casey, yes. is that how you oh, say I your name? It. I like that spelling. Um, I like the, yeah. It is prettier. You're right. T uh, prettier. Assessments are prettier. And in test quiz, you can't add audio video straight in, but in add assessments, if you need to do that for your 504 kids or your dyslexic students, if you need to give them that audio video support, you can directly embed uh, and record into the, um, into the assessment. Karen, do you want to show where that is real quick? Because I had to show a teacher that. Uh, I think what am I showing? <laughs> Wait, let me We're find one. In, um, let me... At, go, no, go to your mastery and new assessments. Where? Oh, right here. Got yeah. It. Oh, but I'm in. Oh, yeah. Oh, you're in resources, aren't you? Yeah, but it, it's okay. It looks like. And so if you click on <laughs> question. <coughs> Sorry. Let me edit. Oh, let me open it. So if you need to embed audio video, which is what, um, so 
And it doesn't, here's the kicker guys, it doesn't show up right away. So a lot of times people are going, where is that feature? You have to actually click like you're going to type into the question. And then the audio video is right here. It has a little calculator. And this is where you get to all those tools. If you wanna add a calculator onto that question or add, a, sorry, add a ruler. But this is also where you go to, uh, add audio video was that that was the question you were asking right yeah yeah okay so that was kind of we went off a little bit on a tangent there i'm sorry about that but um so that like i said here's the videos and things that show you how to import and add those uh, exam views um into here and we have some additional supports as well i'm going to stop sharing because i think kaylee I'll let you do the next ones. There we sure. go. How are y'all doing? Everybody good, right? Love all the, the chats in here. Um, if you have any, yeah, just pop the question mm -hmm. in there. We'll be monitoring that. Yeah, so somebody had um, a question about inserting a PDF, and I think that's going to go with our next question. Okay. Yeah, you can do yeah. So. How do you upload a video into Schoology? So let me just come over here to my practice course. And while Kaylee's doing that, I'm also going to post that the prize link in here. Remember, we're doing attendance based on the Zoom recording. It shows us who all was here. So that's how we're doing attendance. Okay, so you're going to go to add materials and you want to add, I like to put um, my videos on a page. So I'm going to just click add page. And so I'm going to just title this one add video. Okay, and so once it finishes loading, okay, I have this little box with an arrow right here. This is the insert content button, and you're going to use this quite frequently in Schoology. And so when you click on this box, you can insert image media, you can insert YouTube videos. So if it's a video that's on YouTube, I can click here. My goodness, this is a little slow today. And then I can search for the video, okay? Or if I know the link to the video, I can paste in the link. Okay, I'm just gonna say American Revolution. And let's say it's this one, so I can click on that. Import and import as embed. And so there's the video right there, it's yellow. But if I click, and I also, if I'm putting a video into Schoology, I like to click on this little icon right here, this ABC one. Okay, and so it will display it in line if I can get it to click. There it goes, display in line and click create. So if I scroll all the way down, here's my page and it's still loading and there is the video right there. Okay, now another way that I can add a video and I'm gonna just go to edit. And a lot of the times like I'll make my videos with Screencastify so it saves it in my Google Drive. So when I click on insert content, I can get that video from my Google Drive, okay? Or if I've made a video with something like Adobe Spark, or if it's a video that I've uploaded to our YouTube channel and that YouTube channel is unlisted, I'll come here to Image Media and paste in the YouTube link as well. So I click from the web, media, 
And then you can see I've pasted in a lot of YouTube videos already. And so there is that second like that way a lot. Just because I already have the YouTube link, I usually use that one. Yeah, I do too. And so as soon as it lands, you'll see that I have then two videos that are displaying in line. Oh, it's on Snowflake. <laughs> Love Snowflake. Mm -hmm. So and that is how you can add a video. And I think somebody added um, how you can add in a PDF into Schoology. So there's a couple different ways. Again, you can add it to a page like I did here. So I can click edit. And again, I would just use that insert content button. And if it's a file that's on your computer, you can click on file and, or if it's in your Google Drive, you can grab it from your Google Drive, okay? What I also like to do, let me exit out of this. This is slow today. It's really slow. <laughs> What I also like to do is click on add materials and add file link external tool. And so if it's a file that I have on my computer, I'll just click add file and find that file. So I don't know that I, I'm sure I've got some PDF somewhere. Hey, there's PDF. And so now I can click add and it's going to add it to the very bottom. There's a lot in this practice course. And so there's my PDF. And if I click on it, It's loading. There it goes. It's just <laughs> slow. Time tonight. <laughs> it is. It's ready for Christmas break. Mm -hmm. That must be a big document. No, it's only four. Pages. No. <laughs> no, it's my story or my yeah storyboard that demo. <laughs> so that's how you can put in a PDF. Okay. Let's see our next one. How do you upload a Word document so everyone can see it? Will you follow the same protocol that I did with a PDF? So when you would go to your course, you would just click add materials. And again, you would click add file link external tool and everybody can see that Word document. Um, Let's see, I don't know if that person is here who asked that Word document. Uh, Are you here? I think it's Hubert. I think he is here. I thought I saw him. Is he here? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma was that your question? Was that your question? Uh, I thought my question was over the video, which I thought yes, there was on the, I don't have the list of questions with me yeah so. it said how do you upload a word document on schoology so mm -hmm. every class can see it i think yes. it's uh, I think were it's, you referring an actual word document or were you talking about google docs uh like a word document like um you know like microsoft word yes uh-huh okay so yeah you would just click on add materials add file link external tool and then you would click on add file right here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then you would just grab that Word doc. And we wherever you have it saved on your computer. And okay. we included a video on how to upload Word into your Google Drive and convert it to a Google Doc. We weren't sure if you were talking about for an assignment or just for them to see. Um, 
like well, I'm kind of new like, with Schoology, so I'm not really, um, you know, I'm at like at the new. I'm I'm new at at Schoology. Like I'm not intermediate have, or advanced. Start there. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, we all yeah. start there. Yep. That's right. right. Yep. So that's why I'm probably asking basic questions that everybody knows the answers to. <laughs> uh, no, you know what? A lot of people don't. <laughs> they don't. You're not asking anything that everyone else hasn't already asked. Or I actually though. thought that was a good question because when I upload my documents from my Google Drive, sometimes that and copy to courses sometimes that document always it drives me nuts that document does not attach to the to the copies to the uh, to the copies when you copy it to another course yes ma'am you're right and that it's will not never, going to it, it's it not going not, to okay and right. it's it's not a schoology issue that's a google issue because what's happened is when when it's in your google drive and you add it to a course it actually makes this unique URL. And then when you copy it into another course, it doesn't bring that in because it's, no. it's a different URL. So you have to reattach it when you go into your, and it it's kind of, it makes me a little crazy sometimes because we make courses and then we reuse them. And I always have to go back in and double check and reattach all of the um, but i can't even reattach like i can't even edit it and it doesn't give me the option to attach a google drive assignment so what i end up having to do is delete it okay and it then... won't if it won't if the if any kid has already started the assignment oh yeah so what um... you have to do is you have to do it before a kid gets in there because okay. once somebody opens it, a kid, then it will stay a Schoology assignment and you can't at attach okay. it. I've, I've had that happen to me before too. When I first started doing this and I would make a course and then I forgot to add one in and somebody's like, uh, that document you're talking about is not there. Yeah. And then I had to go delete the whole thing. Yes. And yeah. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. It, it's yeah this is what it is okay perfect okay and then our next question is how do you change the date of the assignment and not have the assignment duplicate in the schoology gradebook i know a, karen we had some questions we, about this question because we, we're not sure what you're talking about oh my dogs okay. who was that that asked that question kaylee uh betty mackie was it Betty? And I saw her in Betty. here. Mm -hmm. I thought I did too. Betty, are you still in here, Betty? Are you muted? You know, I don't see her. I'm here. I'm, here. I'm right oh, here. There she is. There she is. Yeah. So, because that happens sometimes, like I'll have it where it's in there, but if I change the date, then it, it double enters it. So I don't know how to get rid of it, you know, from being twice or to what I can. But some students will put the assignment in, it'll go in one column, but then the same assignment, some students will go in another column. So, and I'm, I'm new this year, so I, I'm not sure what to do with, when things like that happen. Well, okay, you, you don't have that individually assigned, do you, or assigned to grading no, groups? No, I don't have it individually assigned. It's assigned as a class and um, it's, yeah. yeah. So you, you didn't hit the sync button. Did you? No, the sync I don't button. know. I don't know what one would be the sync button. So I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have purposely done that. Well, because we couldn't recreate this. We yeah. have not, we, when I change a due date, it doesn't remake another one. That's why we were, sorry, my dogs have decided to start playing. No, it's okay. I have two um, dogs too. So, but no, Betty, I, what, but what campus it, what are it you does at? Is it does duplicate it twice. Like I have it a couple times and it's like that. So, um, you know, and it's done it now a couple times. So I'm not sure what to do. And all I did was change the date and then it showed a duplicate in there and, and I didn't touch other things in it. So I don't know what happened other than that there was just a date change and then it made it you know duplicate in the grade book so i'm you know i'm just not sure what to do then when that happens but you know i can i'll uh, what campus are you at betty i'm at kremel 
You're at Kermel. Kermel okay. Yeah. And have you talked to Kristen Real about this? Um, no, because she's been inundated lately. So, okay. um, yeah, not, you know, but it's been, yeah. So, um, you know, I can try to, you know, so you can, you can reach out to Kristen or you can use either Karen or I's book me link that we had at the beginning of the slide deck and we, let's do with you so that we can actually, um, you can share your screen and show us and we can problem solve and see really what's going on. Okay, so I'll just keep okay. it in there for now and then, because I was just going to delete one of them and then, you know, try to transfer the grades over and just hand do them in or something just so that, because the kids get freaked out and the parents do then when that happens. So, right. I'm, you know, I'm trying to not cause problems. So. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you for helping. I just, I didn't know what to do though. No problem. Yeah, no worries. I'll, I'll unmute me or, or mute me again. So. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, Karen, it is 827. Do we, we have, want we to do some prizes? Do you want me to address this? I, you know what? This is a good question. So let me answer this question okay, first. Real quick though, we only have 19 people out of the 27 who have filled out that kicking it prize thing. So just making sure because I'm about to pull names and then you won't be in there if you don't have your name already in there. So one minute to get your, get that form filled out. Okay, so um, Karen made a great little video about how you can sync just one assignment. And um, I, you know what, cannot show it because I don't have Schoology or I don't have a Skyward. Um, but what you would do, let me exit out of this is in your course, and I can't do it in a practice course because that's not hooked up to Skyward and I don't have any real courses in Schoology. So you would come down here to Skyward and mine's gonna say access denied, but yours will not. We don't have a class. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> so there's my access denied. You are actually gonna have um, something that says um, sync and you'll say, con and then there's gonna be another button that says configure and then if you have sync highlighted, you'll see all the assignments you have. And then there's over here is going to be a little circular arrow. If you click on that circular arrow, that's going to sync just that one assignment. Okay. Uh, let me see if I can uh, if you stop sharing the... and let me find a teacher that I can <laughs> go into. But if you hit the sync button in the grade book, it will send everything that's in that grade book, whether you're ready for it to go or not. But if you always go down to the Skyward um, button and you just find the assignment that you want to um, send and hit the sync button there, then it will only send that assignment. So a lot of times, um, if, you, if you use that in the grade book, then the parents are all like, well, how come they don't have any scores for this? Well, you're not planning to grade it for another week or so, but then the parents are sending you emails going, why do they not have a, you know, anything in the, um, in the grade book? So just a tip there to, to know. Okay, I am about to take the names. Oops. Okay, let me see. It looks like, and we may not have gotten to everyone's questions. We can stay on for a little bit longer if anybody wants to stay on. Let me add these names in. That's true. Let me go ahead and share this real quick so you can see what I am talking about. So I am in um, this algebra course, and if I scroll down to her, oh, I'm not, she'll have, never mind. I don't have Skyward in here because I'm not on her Skyward. Oh, no, no, no. Go up there and say enroll. Enroll is an ad. Oh, there we go. There you go. <laughs> yeah, you just went in real fast there. I did. There's my Skyward. And so you have sync grades and you have configuration. So over here are all of her assignments. And you can see that this one was a successful sync. And you can also see there's a view error on these. So if I hover over it, it says a category is required. So if you have not set up your categories, it's not going to sync. Or if you have it set up to a category that's not in Skyward, it's not going to sync. And remember the only categories you have set up in Skyward is major and minor. 
And so all that we need to do is just click on this little circular arrow and it's going to sync just this assignment. Now I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna do that because this is her grade book, not my class. <laughs> So um, that is how you can only sync just one assignment instead of the whole grade book. You can also come here to sync changes and that's gonna sync everything. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna share my screen. Let me get up here back into this. Okay, and I'm going to bring this over. So I know we didn't get to every question. Um, but we did make videos. Oh, someone had a really good question. How do you um, set up an assignment to allow for multiple submissions? It actually it will automatically take uh, um, more submissions. Let me show that one real fast. I'm gonna go to this course. So I had Kaylee in here earlier today and let me find it. I think I moved it up here. So here it is, Schoology Assignments. So the kids can actually keep submitting. Like if Kaylee went back in here, she could hit submit again. But when I go to look at her assignment here, you'll see that it's on revision two. And I can go back and look at her first submission. So if you want them to, like this is great for writing. Like let's say you want them to put in their first draft and then you want them to edit and put in their second draft, and then you want them to put their final copy in, they could put all of that in onto one uh, assignment by going in there and they just keep hitting that submit button. They can do that as long as you uh, have the due date. Um, you don't have a due date. STEM scopes, you know what? We would love for STEM scopes to start working too. There, it's an issue on STEM scope side and here go my dogs again. And I think but, we are waiting on them. We have been waiting. It was supposed to be fixed sometime in this month of December. Um, we'll try to check on that, but um, yeah, that's kind of a issue that's going on on STEM scopes side um, and not Schoology's here. So. All right, it looks like I've got all the names in here. Okay, so as we were saying earlier, we have these little prize buckets. They're little Christmas ones. We have six of them that we're going to get. Kaylee's got her pen ready to write and I'm going to spin. Okay, so the first prize is going to Courtney. Courtney. Corey. All right, Courtney, you still here? All right, I'm going to remove her name. Yep. Is it Corey? Corey? Yes, it's Corey. Corey. Courtney, it's Corey, and it's a guy. Okay, so Corey. Like, Corey, what campus are you at? I'm at Colin Forest High School. I need so. my contacts fixed. <laughs> Waiting on them for a month. Oh goodness. Okay, I'm going to roll again. Climb Forest. Okay, good. And looks like it went to Laura. All right. Laura, what campus are you at? Laura Forbes. Wonder League. Oh, yay. Okay. okay. Here we go again. Well, this is prize number three. It has been so, Clint. Clint. Okay, it has been so close to Betty, like on every one of these. Clint, <laughs> what campus are you at? Schindelwolf. Schindelwolf, oh yay, okay. Sandra. <laughs> what number are we on? We're on four. Okay. That was our fourth one. And Sandra, what campus are you at? Uh, Greenwood Forest Elementary. Oh, yeah. oh. Hi. Hubert. <laughs> like three guys. I know. Hey. Okay. Hubert, Hubert, what campus are you at? I'm a sub. So um, on Thursday, I'm going to be at, um, what's today, Tuesday? On Thursday, I'm going to be at Club. 
So, okay, okay. Yes. We'll get it over there on Thursday. Yeah. All right. Perfect. Is that five? That is five. So this is our last one for number six. Last one. And Nicole. Nicole Howard. All right. Hi. Nicole. I'm at Ulrich. Well, I was going to say, aren't you at Ulrich? Oh, yes. okay. All right. Thanks, so, guys. You're welcome. All right. So we're, it is, oh, we're a little over on time, but if you all want, uh, if anybody has some questions we didn't get to that they would like us to kind of talk about, you can stay on if you would like, and we will answer those as best we can. I know, um, we want to honor everyone's time. So if you're wanting to, to leave, you are more than welcome to uh, leave if you need to get somewhere. And if what about not, the survey? Can... Well, I'm sorry. The survey to, for the course. I mean. Oh, there's no um, survey. There's not a survey. Oh, there's no survey. Okay. No, okay. there's no survey. Thanks. We're going okay. to do attendance by um, the Zoom report. Reports. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Anyone that so a few people have stayed on. Let me get all this on here. Now we had a few questions. Anyone still on that their question didn't get answered? Okay, so who answered who asked about OneNote? Because we we don't have any really great news about OneNote. <laughs> uh, that was Amber Blake. Is she still on? No. Well, if y'all are using OneNote, um, they made some changes. Microsoft made some changes and Microsoft hasn't gotten it fixed where it works correctly with Schoology. So um, the person that put in the question said they had been struggling with it. I did put a link in here to uh, one of our digital learning specialists at Klein Oak. She had made a, a website, but her directions will not really work fully because of the issues. Um, the, her suggestion, what she's been telling a lot of her people on her campus is to look at class kick or to look at one of my favorites is if you have not gone to look at this one, it is whiteboard.chat. Uh, I love that site. So that's another one that you could use that could be an interactive board that kids can use. Um, but that's kind of where that stands right now. Anyone else? We have a couple of people still on. Do you have any specific questions? Any questions? While you're on, let me get this. No, no questions. It was with um, uh, STEM Sculpt. So what I do, I have, I ask my students to download Kami, but I know some of my other um, teammates, they have not been successful with that with parents helping their students download Kami. So they're trying to see if they could upload the STEM Sculpts through a PDF. And hopefully I'll be able to do that with the file that you showed us but there's just not an easy way to up well, the stem school documents with this whiteboard.chat like i when i click on and i'm still sharing my screen right yes. when i click on this i can actually and i'm trying to remember uh because i haven't played with it in a little bit but there is a let me find the little thing i can actually i'm trying to find the little upload button I can, sorry y'all, my, I really got to get these contacts fixed. Um, there is an upload button that I'm not like seeing at the exact moment, but you can upload your PDFs. Anybody see the upload button that I'm not seeing? No, but I was going to say- Oh, you there can it is, do... upload file, there we go. I found it, it's down here at the bottom. So if I find a PDF real fast, let me see if I have one. Oh, here's some. Here's a math assessment. 
assessment. Let me just grab this one. I can upload this and put it in here and then the kids can actually now start writing and drawing on top of this. I can find now the draw tool. Oh, there they are. So I can now start annotating and working on these uh, files. And I believe- And if you go to grid view at the bottom, you'll be able to see all your students working at the same time. I'm not, you know what's bugging me right now is because my share screen is in the way. Oh. I can't see my grid. <laughs> There's a grid view down at the bottom. Sorry guys, but this, let me see if I can, let me, there, let me move this. There we go. There we go. There we go. So I can actually, and then, you know, you can invite kids, you can give them the code. What's great about this is you can embed this um, link that's right here. You just copy this, add this into Schoology and then the kids can get right into it. And then I can, um, I can watch them working as they're working. Um, you know, Karen, I've had teachers use that same link over and over and they just keep going to a new page. Yeah. In whiteboard.chat. Yeah. Yeah. And they just keep adding things to it. Yeah. yeah. So that seems fun. Yes, I like that. Option. And I'll tell you what I love about this is this little palette right here. There are the math manipulatives and they're right here. Um, so if you need a ruler protractor, if you need fraction bars, if you need um, unifix cubes, if you need number lines, if you need arcs, if you need, uh, they've got tons of stuff in here. And then if you're a music teacher, he's now added, I saw this the other day, He's added all these musical notes and chemistry. I saw him the other day. Oh, look at this. He's put a bunch of stuff in here now for chemistry. Um, so he's constantly, oh, there's my dog again, updating this site. So just lots of cool stuff with this one. So that might Sandra, be an are you? Sorry, are you on Facebook? Yes. So they have a Facebook group for whiteboard.chat and the guy who is the creator of whiteboard.chat is on that group and so he's constantly updating it and taking your feedback from that group so if you want to just hop on and join that group um, that's another great resource he added clocks the other day how cool Dinners and clocks <laughs> and this is an interactive clock let me go get this but you can move the hands it's just lots of cool stuff that um Oh. Yes, Cami doesn't offer the whole interaction piece to it. No, it right. does not. And so you can do a lot of cool stuff with this. Dogs. What I also like is I like using Class Kick with PBS as well. Yes, Class Kick. Class and that's kick. very easy to use, Class Kick. Okay, mm -hmm. I added him already <laughs> for the Facebook. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's called Teachers Using Whiteboard.chat. And what's great about him is he, um, you post something in there and he's constantly going, okay, I'll look at that. And then 